Here. Um, here. Foreman. Here. Weber. Here. Hoggett. Here. Uh, here. All right, we have a new officer who's going to be sworn in tonight, uh, Officer Thomas Parsons, Chief. Uh, Parsons, I'm Gary. Good to see you, by you gentlemen. Yeah. It's not good at a new easier. <laughs> Public hearing on the proposed amendments to the Municipal Code, Chapter 255 Zoning, Section 255 75.2, Breweries, brew, pub, brew Pubs, Wineries, and dis Distilleries to allow breweries in the B3 Central Business District and the B2 General Business District through the approval of a conditional use permit. Anybody have anything to say? Any comment? Any comment? Any comment? Move to close public hearing. Okay, we have a motion to close public hearing. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Public hearing is closed. Public hearing on the 2017 Street Improvements Project Special Assessments, Grandview Drive from Laurel Avenue to Vine Street. Just to make everybody aware in the audience, anybody that forwarded a letter to me or through the um, clerk's office, the council was forwarded all those letters last week. So everybody has, anything that was presented to me was presented to them. So just so you know that. Mr. Mayor, I'm uh, recusing myself from the uh, council for the hearing and for the motion later on. Right, and I will be as well, but you can, you can stay here for the public hearing portion if you'd like. Yeah, that is strictly I am. Um, hearing <laughs> comments, no deliberation or questions by the council on that matter. Okay. Welcome. If you would, please state your name and give your address. Uh, my name is Colleen Callahan. I live at 600 Grandview Drive in Hudson, Wisconsin. Uh, I am the communications officer for Stone Pine Overall Homeowners Association. The um, president, Linda Larson, is out of town and unable to come tonight. Um, so I would like to read the letter that I wrote to the Common Council. The Board of Directors um, of Stone Pine o Overall Homeowners Association would like to appeal the preliminary assessments for four properties along Grandview Drive. Parcel numbers 236-2000-02, dash 020, 236-2001-05-00, 236-2001-06-700, 236-2003-015, -06 for a total assessment of $15,550.36. The appeal is based on the following reasoning. Police power must confer a special benefit. The replacement of curbs and gutters along Grandview Drive will not increase the value of the overall properties because the properties which are common areas, specifically developed as green spaces, 
are not resaleable. No benefit will be realized now or in the future. The Stone Pine Overall Association Board believes this does not constitute an uncommon advantage as required under Wisconsin Statute 66.0703. Number two, the Grandview Drive project will require removal and replacement of zone lines that feed into a sprinkler system along portions of Grandview Drive. This will add an estimated cost to the Stone Pine Overall Homeowners Association of $15,000 in addition to the $15,550.36 assessment. This, un this otherwise unnecessary work creates a special burden instead of a special benefit. Assessment must be based on equitable and reasonable apportionment. Quote, mere uniformity of treatment does not establish reasonableness, unquote, according to the special assessments in Wisconsin Manual by the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. Quote, rather uniqueness of a property may be the cause for the assessment being unreasonable, unquote. Stone Pine overall properties have been assessed the same amount, $14 per foot, as private properties. Because the overall common areas along Grandview Drive were designed as green spaces, and I do have attached photos, uh, the association board believes that its assessed properties constitute unique physical conditions that should not be assessed at the same rate as individual property owners, whose real estate um, includes housing and re resale value. Stone Pine Overall Association believes this assessment establishes an inequitable apportionment. Number two, 38 Stone Pine members have been individually assessed for the Grandview Drive project. Because they pay homeowner association dues, which in turn would go toward the overall properties assessment, these Stone Pine Overall members would essentially be taxed twice for the same project. The board which represents these homeowners believe this is an unreasonable apportionment. Based on this rationale, Stone Pine Overall Homeowners Association Incorporated respectfully asked Hudson Common Council to rescind the total assessment of $15,550.36. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Cy Houston. My wife Peggy and I live at 616 Grandview Drive, right here. We filed a letter on April 28th appealing from your preliminary uh, resolution, 717, and our issues are these. Although we have a Grandview Drive address, our property does not abut or face Grandview Drive. We're essentially landlocked. Our property, in fact, is 144 feet from Grandview Drive. In fact, we're closer to Topaz Lane behind us than we are at Grandview. But we don't own any property that could be considered a corner lot, a side lot, or a front lot on Grandview. Our association is not a group of townhomes. Instead, we're made up of owners who own the property and all the improvements on the property. There are nine properties like ours, and they've all filed letters of appeal from this resolution. The curb and gutter assessment for our property is over here. Let me do a little close up for you. Here's Grandview, here's the gutter, here's our cul de sac coming in. The curb and gutter assessment assumes removal and replacement of curb and gutter at the entrance to our cul-de-sac. Even though we have no property on Grandview, we're being assessed a portion of the cost for 308.8 feet of improvements for the properties which do face or abut Grandview, properties we don't own. In addition, there's no curb to the entrance to our cul-de-sac. So there's no curb to remove. There's only a gutter there right up against the bituminous surface. So the assessment is obviously incorrect. We're being assessed for removal and, and uh, work on, pro on uh, a project that doesn't exist. We're being assessed for saw cut bituminous. There's already a gutter there. There is no need to saw cut any of the asphalt. You'll dig it out next to the uh, gutter, replace that and the gutter, so the saw cut is obviously an incorrect assessment. 
uh, unless you're planning on replacing our, our cul-de-sac, which would be a different matter, and we could talk about that. Charges for similar work, the removal, the replacement, and the cutting are not being assessed to others in a similar and exact same position. Owners of property on Hunter Hill Court, Stone Pine Avenue, Stone Pine Bay, and Stone Pine Courts, like all of us, only have access to their property from Grandview Drive. But we get assessed and they do not. They cannot, again, they cannot get out of their home and their driveway without going to Grandview. But they're not assessed and we are. That's unequal treatment. The resolutions and the assessments are based on what you quoted as special benefits that we would receive as a result of this project. Not common benefits, but specific and special benefits. We ask that the city provide us with an explanation of what those benefits are. We understand that it should provide either an increase in services or enhanced property value. We fail to see how that will happen to our property at all. So, but please, stipulate, if you will, what those would be since we're being assessed for this, especially on property owned not by us but by others. Lastly, and most importantly, and philosophically, we do not believe assessing property owners for street repairs makes any sense at all. Repairing our streets is a common benefit to every citizen that lives here, and therefore we believe should be paid for by all of us. We would recommend that you levy taxes, increase the mill levy next year by whatever you need to take care of this project for all of us and avoid this, uh, this public hearing process, any of this. We should all pay for what we benefit from. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. I'm uh, Marion Weber at 604 Grandview, <coughs> Grandview Drive. And um, we're the house that has that pretty little berm with the plantings on it, which, are, which is supported by an irrigation system. And basically, my concern, and it's more of a question, and it's an ask, is that um, we maintain that irrigation system that waters that, our yard. It's not part of the association. Uh, it's a separate system. But I was wondering if you go into an area and you cause destruction to an existing amenity on the property, if it's the, if the cost falls to the city or the contractor or to us. So it's kind of a question. I'd like to have an answer to that if you could. We can have that addressed when, during the discussion portion of the project. Anyone else? Anyone else? I'm Corey Pope from 1800 Stone Pine Bay. And I guess my overall question is just why. We were assessed previously. We paid for the repair and <laughs> replacement of the curb and gutter already. I've taken pictures of every block of our curb and gutter, and it's in perfect condition. So my question is why again? OK, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Can I say one more thing? Sure. And I can tell you from past experience, we had to pay for the repair to our sprinkler system. Anyone else? Anyone else? Last call. Anyone else? Yes, sir. One more. Peter Verstegen, 600 Grandview Drive. As you can see, I'm in a wheelchair here, so I want to make sure we have access during construction to my residence. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Last call. Anyone else? Is there a motion? Move to close the public hearing. Second. Got a motion, second to close the public hearing. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Public hearing is closed. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. Uh, next is comments and suggestions from citizens. Anybody have any comments? Anybody have any comments? 
Last call, anybody have any comments? We'll close that portion of the agenda. Discussion and possible action on consent agenda items. <coughs> to approve the regular session meeting minutes of May 1st, 2017, to approve council claims in the amount of $339,918.34, contingent on payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city and successful completion of the background check, approve the issuance of six regular operator licenses for the period of May 16th, 2017 to June 30th, 2019 to Lauren Sanderson, George Escobar Festino, David Craig, Mark Bennett, Julian McPherson, and Heather McKinley, to approve the amusement device owner's licenses to Namco USA and the 11 games listed on their application, and also Leisure Entertainment LLC and the five games that they had listed on their application, contingent on payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city, to approve the issuance of fireworks paraphernalia sales permits for sales dates of June 15, 2017 to June, July 7, 2017, to Menards, 1400 Gateway Boulevard, Mills Fleet Farm, 1001 Industrial Street, Charles Walker, NT Fireworks for Target Store at 2401 Cooley Road, and Walmart Store at 2222 Crestview Drive. To approve a temporary Class B beer and temporary Class B wine license for Friday, June 23, 2017 for the American <coughs> Cancer Society Relay for Life of Hudson at Lakefront Park. To approve a temporary Class B beer license for backcountry hunters and anglers for Brewfest on July 29, 2017 at Lakefront Park. To accept the rotary donation of four little free libraries to the city parks. To approve the Relay for Life event on June 23, 2017 from 4 p.m. till midnight at Lakefront Park. To approve Britfest Car Show on August 12, 2017. To consider approving the special event permit for go for the Badger race, Mark Bongers on August 11th and 12th, 2017, and allowing the start time of the event to begin at 4.30 a.m., contingent on payment by the organizer for any charges to hire police officers or any extra public works, park staff, EMS staff, and that signage be picked up at the completion of the event. Please pull that item. Uh, to approve the easement agreement to construct a fence within a drainage and utility easement for James R. Lindgren at 2328 Donegal Way. I, don't know, I probably didn't say that right. To set a public hearing date for June 19, 2017 at 7 p.m. for the proposed amendments to Chapter 255, Zoning of the, Munici Zoning of the Municipal Code, uh, Section 255-48, Off-Street Parking Requirements. To set a public hearing date for June 19, 2017 at 7 p.m. for the proposed amendment to Chapter 255, Zoning of the Municipal Code for creation of a new downtown zoning district. To set a public hearing date for June 19, 2017 at 7 p.m. for application for rezoning from Monarch Ventures LLC for, for 811 First Street and forward to Plan Commission and City Staff for review and recommendation. To place and file the Walnut Street Bridge financial update to place on file the Public Utility Quarterly Report, to place on file the Public Utility Com Commission meeting minutes of May 9th, 2017, and to place on file the Finance Report for the first quarter. Move to approve. Mm -hmm. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion is second to approve. More mm -hmm. call. Morset. Yes. Um, yes. Cormick. Yes. Weber. Yes. Hoggett. Yes. Hall. Yes. Motion's approved. Oh, um, yeah, Randy, you pulled the... I would like to move that we send that to public safety for review before final approval. Okay. Um, we got a motion to... Second. Which one? K. Uh, item K, the special event for Go for the Badger. You guys ever looked at that one? Oh. Sorry. Okay, we got a motion, second discussion. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Unfinished business. Discussion of possible action on election of a council president. Needs two thirds of the, uh, of the membership here. For, fortunately, we're all together. <laughs> Do I hear any nominations? I'll nominate Jim Weber. We have a nomination, Jim Weber. Any other nominations? Nominate John Hoggett. 
Jim Weber, John Hoggett. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Hearing no other nominations, nominations are closed. Grab me some slips. <laughs> this could be a really big night for you, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already the chairman of the board of review, now, so thanks for <laughs> I think you travel too much. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. All right, on a vote of four to two, uh, John Hoggett has been elected uh, council president. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. It is a big night. Twice in one night. Sure. <laughs> buy a lottery ticket? I should buy one. Thank you. All right, congratulations. Um, next, the discussion and possible Discussion of possible action on request for timely startup extension on liquor license from River City Hospitality Center. Do you want me Welcome. to start yeah, speaking? Welcome. Uh, please state your name. My name is uh, Doug Carl, uh, partner and chief operating officer of LHR uh, Hospitality. And uh, I'm here tonight. Doug Rohde couldn't make it, which I think everyone knows Doug. Pam's getting an award tonight or recognized for... 10 years of service at the, uh, the Hudson uh, schools. So he found that to be a little bit more important, which is, I think, understandable. Um, so we are requesting an extension. Uh, we're intending to have a groundbreaking in late summer. Uh, we've been held up with a couple issues related to the franchise. Um, the Ex Holiday Inn Express prototype that we're doing, it's a five-story, which is new, to Holiday Inn Express versus four-story. It's caused some delays in uh, uh, moving things forward and uh, uh, working with the brand to be able to have a, uh, a prototype that not only works for this site, but something that's gonna work for additional five-story prototypes in other locations as well. And so that's been our, our main holdup uh, on this. The second item that we've got is uh, we're intending to open the clubhouse uh, to events prior to the hotel being completed. Uh, until we have uh, everything laid out, uh, GC on board, uh, we're not sure where we're going to have staging areas, things like that, so we have access issues that need to be addressed prior to the uh, clubhouse and uh, restaurant and bar opening up. So with those two items, we're requesting an extension until October. That'll, that'll give us a little bit of leeway uh, so we don't have to come back to the uh, council again to request a, uh, another extension. So with that, is there any questions or thoughts? Do you know how many uh, the uh, will seat in the uh, clubhouse for your uh, event? It's an uh, we should go be able to go 350 to 400. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd have to say it's between three and 400, but 350 I think is a safe number to uh, to throw out there. I defer to council. How would that uh, work with the particular liquor license issue? I'm sorry, I was looking at... He the has a, enough uh, seating in the clubhouse for the... Oh, for the 300? That's right. Um, well, that is a 300-seat restaurant is one of the categories for above quota licenses. 
I believe the city would have to adopt an ordinance. Well, let me, let me ask those. you. Currently, we have the license. What's the number of seats that's on it? Because I could be incorrect but on the, the current one. Is it's not. It's there's no restriction yeah, on the license. Yeah, he actually has his license. We're, but what we're looking at is it's a minimum, and what we, what, we would, what I'm thinking would be possible is to use the license that you have take it back for some other business and give you the one which allows you to do the same exact things because he makes the minimum of 300 right. well you, you can't just not renew a, i'm not saying i'm, I'm asking the course is it within one room pardon is that within one room or is it for i the think it's facility? just a 300 seat uh, a restaurant that can accommodate 300 seats okay so are you going to be up and down we'll we'll be over that when you include the seating in the restaurant bar as well as the banquet space we'll be over that number uh scott any idea what the uh, legal limit is fire limit in that building uh no i don't know I know the upstairs was two two fifty to three hundred. Okay. Uh, I remember that, but I don't know about the inclusion of downstairs. So what Alderperson Marset's discussing is there was a state law passed that allows municipalities to create an ordinance that would allow for an additional license or additional licenses for any um, facility that would serve more than three hundred people. Okay. And I think what Randy's saying is that at some point we could potentially shift the license that you currently were approved for over to one of those and that would free up then the license that you've been approved for. that but makes sense by all means i'm not trying to impede your yeah. forward no. progress on your building but I'm, I'm trying to get us to a some different discussion and agreement well right. perhaps we can sense. have some uh resolution to the just as a question uh, in the near future yeah. right to have working with scott and uh and because if we if we can get a definitive on that number as randy said it does free up a license for the number of people that are already waiting so, so what could be done is you could approve an extension and then if right. something were right. to change yes. you could yeah he would essentially turn that one back in and be granted a I will, different one i will move to approve the the extension but i want staff to go to look and, into and it. work on mm -hmm. okay. looking yep. at the particulars and present us a proposal mm -hmm. are you guys open to a change going in the future definitely okay yes awesome okay is there a motion thank you. Was thank you randy was that a motion yes is there a second second okay we've got a motion and a second discussion all those in favor aye. 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 opposed motions approved thank you uh thank you presentation on sale of bonds and bond rating report discussion of possible action on resolution number 10-17 regarding sale of geo bonds sean Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, just real brief background. I was at the second meeting, I think in March, and we started the process for the borrowing for this year's street, uh, fire truck, and other capital improvements. Uh, they fall into two categories. So we went out to market today for general obligation bonds, which was for the fire truck and the street improvements, and then notes for the remaining capital projects. Mm -hmm. And as a part of that, this document, which I think the council members received, was uh, put together. We, um, this document then was circulated to potential investors uh, locally, as well as nationwide, uh, asking them to put in bids on the bond issue and the note issue at uh, 11 o'clock today. Uh, the other item that we used that preliminary official statement for, and as part of the uh, mayor's announcement of the agenda item is we updated the city's bond rating so we had a we had a, a conference call with moody's investor service city staff and the mayor and i were on that call i think it was about an hour long they asked a lot of general questions about what's going on in hudson and as usual there's a lot of things to talk about and a lot of positives uh, following that discussion and in your packet is the report that they put together on the um, updating of the rating for the city. And I'm happy to note that they uh, maintain the city's bond rating at double A2, which I think I've, as I've mentioned to the council before, we've been here for a couple years now. Uh, that's just two steps below the very best rating that you could have, the AAA rating. And as you read through, I, I think uh, the way I would summarize it is 
the material or the events and issues that the city has control over I think you're doing a very good job management uh, budgeting the um, uh, the uh, fund balance are all strong positives that they note in the report some of the things that preclude upward mo motion and the bond rating is related to just the demographics of the community and the size of the community so those are all factors they take into account and they note in here that a larger tax base would be maybe an element that could lead in the future to Hudson having a, an even better bond rating. But again, the AA2 is a very, very strong rating that you've got at this point. So with that uh, as a background, then we did go out for those bids at 11 o'clock today. And I'd like to start with the bond issue, if I may. That's the uh, 2017A. And if you go a couple, one page back from the bond rating report, you'll see the bid tabulation there. And if you page through a couple pages there, you'll see the five bids that we received on the 2,495,000. $2, the best bid was from uh, Baird with a 2.47% interest rate, combined interest rate. And as you go through the other bids, you'll see the next uh, three after that are very close, right around two and a half percent. And we did have, uh, interesting enough, uh, Midwest One Bank bid on their own and they're also a participant, which we were happy to see out of Hudson uh, as well in the list. Now, if I can have the council go to the last page of this handout for the 2017A bonds. Uh, what you see there is the final amortization schedule based on the winning bid from uh, Baird. And the, we put in the updated interest rates. And in the middle section of this page, you'll see the interest rates from the pre-sale report, which were right around uh, 2.7. The true interest cost was 2.78% at that time. And with the winning bid on the 15-year bonds, uh, that bid is 2.47, as I'd mentioned before. And that also translates into about 30,000 less in interest cost over the life of the issue with that, uh, that lower interest rate. So we were uh, very pleased with the interest in the city's debt and the results of the sale. Uh, what we would need this evening to approve the bid from Baird on the series 2017A issue is approval of a resolution that was put together by the city's bond council, Eckberg and Lammers. And I think, Jen, I think you got an update of that today with all the blanks filled in. Uh, Mayor, I don't know if you'd rather take these one at a time or if you'd rather have me go through the other issue, I'd be happy to do that. What's too. your preference? I, I think I can do both and then you guys can take action if that's that's okay, if we can go through any, both. Any sentiment here? Sounds good. <clears throat> both? Okay, Sean. Okay. Yeah, if we go to the second report, uh, again, the bond rating applied to both the, uh, the notes and the bonds, so for both issues. Uh, this. This issue, the 2,470,000 note issue, has a 10-year repayment schedule rather than a 15, like the bond issue does. And oftentimes we see, usually see a little bit more interest in the shorter issues. In this case, we ended up getting six bids, whereas on the bond issue we had five. So not a, not a whole lot of difference. But again, very strong results. Uh, the winning bid, happy to report, is under 2% for the 10-year repayment, 1.957% uh, from UMB Bank out of uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Another element of having that excellent bond rating is we tend to see interest from a wider range out of, not just out of Milwaukee and out of the Twin Cities, but a, a wider range with that, uh, that rating. And again, very competitive if you look at the, uh, the other uh, six, excuse me, the other five <laughs> bids here in terms of the interest in the city's debt. Uh, if you go to the next page, which was the update of the repayment schedule, and again, interest rates we had projected right around 2.5% for the repayment on the 10-year issue that was in the pre-sale report from March. And again, with this bid, we're 1.95%. Uh, so very pleased with those results. And lastly, there's a chart at the back that I also had in the pre-sale report. Uh, this is just a look at the impact of the new two issues we're talking about, the 2017 A and B, 
uh, added on to the existing debt that the city already has outstanding. So the existing debt is in the blue on this chart and the new debt is in the green. And as we've talked with staff, uh, uh, Brenda's plan for the future on the debt, as you can see, we're, we are expecting a little uptick from 2017 to next year's budget. And then as we go forward to 2019, because we're borrowing for two years, we would expect that overall debt levy to stay at the same level. So for budget 18, budget 19. And then as we go forward beyond that, the overall debt for the city is structured in a way that if other projects are coming up and the, the council will be dealing with those, the next two year borrowing likely in 2019, we've got some capacity to add that debt in with hopefully not seeing much or any of a spike up in the overall levy that the city is budgeting for the repayment of uh, principal and interest on your debt. So that is as designed as we work with Brenda on that, kind of setting the, the city up for what is gonna be future needs and future de debt issues and how that would be structured in to the existing uh, debt for the city. Then going back to the resolutions, uh, Mayor, there's two separate resolutions, one for the bonds, one for the notes. What we would need is uh, we'd need action on those resolutions to lock into the winning bid from Baird on the bonds and UMB Bank on the 10-year notes. But uh, before that, if there's <coughs> any questions on the bond rating process or on the, the uh, two sales, I'd be happy to answer those. Anybody have any questions? Anything? I'll move, to I'll move to suspend the rules for both resolution 1017, resolution 1117. Second. Okay, you got a motion and a second to suspend. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Formic? Yes. 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 Motion's approved. Move to adopt resolution 10-17. Okay. Got a motion and a second uh, for the first, re first resolution discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Move to adopt um, resolution 11-17. Second. Okay. Motion second to approve the second resolution discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Excellent. Great. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. Sean. Thank Good you, job. Council. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. All right. New business. Discussion of possible action on the purchase of mobile radios from Professional Wireless for the Police Department. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a quick history on this. The reason that we're getting new mobile radios for our patrol cars is that the county in April of next year is going to a new frequency system and the law enforcement portion of that is going to be digital. Our portables are capable of doing that currently right now, but our mobiles are not. That's why we needed to go forward and get these bids taken care of this year. Um, on April 5th, I sent out uh, three requests for bids from Professional Wireless, GenCom, and Warner Communication. I only received two back from General Communications and Professional Wireless. Um, and after doing checking to make sure that the bids were correct, uh, my recommendation is to go with Professional Wireless for 27,124. Okay. Discussion? Oh, I'm sorry, motion? I move to approve. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Marty. Discussion possible action on change order number one, building automation system project 700 First Street. Um, as I noted at Finance Committee, Tom Zuli had a family emergency, couldn't be here this evening. Um, Finance Committee recommended um, approval of the change order with funds to be taken from um, a couple of the other capital projects that came in under budget. I move to approve. Second. Okay, motion and second. <clears throat> Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Uh, discussion of possible action on accepting bids for the 2017 Toolcat Bobcat 5600 purchase. Um, Finance Committee recommended approval. Um, the money is in the capital budget. I'll move to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion? I made the motion, she made the second. <laughs> <laughs> 
No. We're in turbo mode now. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motions approved. Discussion of possible action on adoption of final resolution uh, number 9-17 authorizing 2017 street improvement project special assessments. Um, want Tom to come up or? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, Tom, are you going to, going to um, do the yes, recusal? Gonna, yes, we're going to, yes. So to Jim and I uh, are recusing ourselves because we're members of the Stone Pine Association. And John, do you want to come up and run the meeting? Oh, uh, sure. Do it from there. <laughs> Can you do it from there? <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> do we have to leave? Yeah, you. Um, the GAB Fine. recommends that you leave the room during the <laughs> discussion and deliberations. So just to, these are the five items that I believe were brought forth before Tom, before, and you probably made notes of them too. The question on the common areas, um, the private dive situation, um, question on what happens if there's damage to property irrigation system, question on the rationale for replacing the curb and gutter, and then the access to the one residence. So. You can address them wherever you want, but those are the notes I had, so. All right, I thought maybe what I could do before I get to those specific questions, and uh, yes, I did write some of these down and had the advanced uh, letters for, uh, that were submitted earlier, but. Could you, um, yeah, could you flip the mic over there, Tom? Yeah. Okay, um, again, maybe uh, as a matter of just an introduction, uh, again, the project is the 2017 street improvements and it's Grandview Drive from Laurel Avenue to Vine Street. And the project is a street improvement project and it includes a bituminous replacement, replacement of concrete curb and gutter and the associated driveways. There'll be new pedestrian ramps installed and there'll be new signage and pavement markings followed up by restoration. Uh, it seems like a lot of the discussion has kind of focused in on two points. One is curb and gutter and one is driveways. And I understand the reason for that because those are the accessible items as per the city's policy. But in looking at the overall project, again, this is a street improvement project. The concrete curb and gutter is an integral part of the street design. It's an integral part of the drainage. There's a protection piece from the private property side and any landscaping that's on that side. That's a uh, uh, little protection from the aesthetics as well. There's a safety element or a safety component, and it also helps for erosion control. So if you look, we can't just look at the curb and gutter. There's, the big picture is the improvements is a street improvement project. Now, I wasn't sure what order you brought up your questions, Devin, so I'll just try to hit them as I go through. But uh, relative to the private entrances and whether it's fair or not fair when compared to some of the other city streets. Um, for example, Hunter Hill Court, Stone Pine Avenue, Stone Pine Bay, Stone Pine Court, those are cul-de-sacs which come out onto Grandview. They are city right-of-ways, they are 60 foot wide, and there's a city standard street, 32 foot width, sitting inside that. The individuals on those cul-de-sacs are not included in this assessment report. Their driveways their private entrances and driveways enter onto a city street, city right of way. In the future, you could anticipate that those city streets would also have to be improved at some time after deterioration, after a number of years. And at that time, those individuals would have to pay for improvements on Hunter Hill Court, Stone Pine Avenue, Stone Pine Bay, et cetera. In looking at the private entrances, those are not city right of way. They are private entrances located within an easement, and they're at a 20-foot width, typically narrower than a city standard street. When looking at how to uh, assess those costs, uh, somebody mentioned 308 feet. For example, there is one block uh, of lots. There's six units, and there's 300 feet adjacent to Grandview, 300 feet of curb which translates into so many dollars. By virtue of the fact that these six units can only access Grandview by virtue of that private drive and that private entrance, um, we took the cost for the 300 foot segment and divided it by six. We have done that on the past 
uh, street improvements. We did it last year, 2016 street improvements. Uh, Aspen Drive between Mayor Road and uh, Hanley. There's a couple of private drives similar to this one, wheat grass, tall grass, and sweet grass. Basically almost the exact same situation. A run of property with a private drive in the middle that serves, and in this case it was it serves 20 units. So there we took the costs across that frontage and divided it by the 20 private users that would access that project from their private drive. We did it in 2015 too. On it. So there's been a history of that type of cost applicator, splitting up the costs. Uh, on the previous, we did it in 2015 street improvements also. Um, on the homeowners association parcels, there was a question brought up there. There's a couple of council members that are not in the room here, they've recused themselves. Uh, I also live on Hunter Hill Road, so I am also a potential person that would be indirectly assessed by virtue of the common property and the overall homeowners association. On the advice of the city attorney, I was not going to address that question, yes or no. In other words, I wasn't gonna address it, yes, there is benefit, no, there is not benefit. So again, on the advice of the city attorney, we contacted one of our engineering consultants to provide an opinion as to whether there is benefit to those green space, open space lots. Uh, the consultant did come back with an opinion that uh, he felt that there was benefit from the curb and gutter to those properties. It is, I'll just, I can hit a couple of his points. Uh, it establishes a def definite limit to the property, it finishes the aesthetics, finishes the landscaping, minimizes erosion control or erosion troubles, prevents drainage or uh, damage to the property. Um, and he thought that the benefit would be equal to, in this case, where the city's policy assesses 50% of the curb, he felt that that benefit is a match and would be, uh, would be a benefit relative to the, prop, or the pro project side, would be a benefit, and the assessment would, would also equate to that. Um, so again, we have, a, we have a, an opinion from, from, the, from the outside consultant. Um, uh, who was the sure. consultant? Bolden Mink, one of our city engineers that uh, has been working with us on a lot of these street projects. Are we, <coughs> excuse me, are um, we able to, in our current ordinance, make adjustments of percentages based on opinions, or is that just, I mean, can we say, well, well we don't. We agree that there's some benefit, but maybe it's only 25 percent. Or I mean, are, do we have some latitude here in terms of how we're going to be able to address the situation? Or again, what I have done in preparing the preliminary assessment role is pretty much comes right out of the city assessment policy. Okay. The same policy was followed uh, on Vine Street last year, uh, as I said in Aspen Drive, Industrial Street the previous year. You can go back to 2015, the same, the same policy has been followed. In other words, uh, it isn't really my interpretation. It is basically pretty black and white that the city assesses in a street improvement project 50% of the cost of the concrete curb and gutter and the driveways. Um, again, that's what started a lot of the discussion because that's what shows up on the assessment roll is those two, those two line items. Again, I'd like to kind of highlight here, though, that, again, this is a larger project than just curb and gutter improvements. It's a street improvement. When we're all said and done, that's a brand new street out there. Um, in fact, we, the project is estimated to cost about $717,000. And we are proposing, and at least in the preliminary assessment role, to assess about $73,009, which is about 10% of the project costs. Um, from my previous experience, I know a lot of communities that assess a lot more than 10% of a project cost. Um, again, but that, that's neither here nor there. But it, relative to your question, John, on the, on the assessment, it's pretty much, unless the city attorney could, it's pretty much, a, a, I don't wanna say black and white, but the policy is, it is not like we're interpreting something to come up 
with this dollar amount. Um, and again, uh, right now we do not have a fixed number because we don't have the bids in. The schedule at this time is to take bids uh, last week of May and potentially award the contract on June 5th. Then we would start construction if that all, uh, if the council wants to go forward at that time, we would start construction mid-June uh, and go uh, probably somewhere in a seven to eight week time frame for a, for a completed project. Uh, one other thing I might, I did hear a question on access during construction. Uh, I have already met with a couple of the homeowners association groups we, we have met with the post office. Uh, we have, will be meeting with uh, garbage pickup. We've talked with the YMCA. We had calls into the bus company. So we are going to address those concerns. Um, we do have to provide some closures to build this particular project and we will have a pre-construction meeting with the contractor. That should be in the first week of June, once we know who that low bid contractor is. And we want to follow that meeting up with a neighborhood, uh, residential neighborhood meeting that we are going to invite all the, the residents here, uh, the residents adjacent to Grandview Avenue, as well as some of these cul-de-sacs that were uh, mentioned earlier, Hill, uh, Hunter Hill uh, Court, Stone Pine Avenue, Stone Pine Bay, to explain to people the sequence, the construction, the schedule, and how we're going to plan on getting people in and out of there. Uh, and uh, as well as emergency services, we have to get uh, access to as well. Two questions, Tom. Why are we knocking out curb that doesn't, it's not in disrepair? If, if, I, if I understand like in projects in the past, it's over consistency for the project or the integrity of the whole project itself? Okay, uh, it's more than that. I, I guess I'm not sure where the individual, where the good curve <coughs> was. Um, we have. Okay, I, sorry, but I couldn't hear where exactly you're talking about. We have evaluated the curb. We have looked at it with our, our con one of our engineering consultants, in this case, Bolton and Mink, uh, is working on this project with the city. Um, that stretch of curb is, in our view, and the consultant concurred, in very, very poor condition. You have troubles at almost every single joint. Joints are at 10 foot intervals for thousands of feet. Uh, the curb is pretty much gone to the tune of four inches thick. Uh, it's only a seven inch front face curb. The uh, edge of that concrete adjacent to the bituminous surface itself, which is parallel to the center line, runs the full length, is also washing away in a substantial amount uh, of this project. Um, so when you look at the overall project, that curb is in terrible condition and it's our opinion it should be removed and replaced. Now that said, there's also an economic uh, component to all, all we try to do. To cut and paste and remove and replace curb and gutter on a spot basis is substantially more money than having somebody come in and remove couple thousand feet of curb and then put new curb back in with a with a uh, with a curb machine uh, again it's on the magnitude of almost double I think it's it might be in the thirty forty dollars a foot range if you uh, spot spot check spot repair curb as opposed to right now we're estimating fourteen dollars a foot to remove and replace the curb again that's at fifty percent so we're really estimating twenty eight dollars so Again, and I don't have the low bids at this point, but on order of magnitude, it's about two to one to, on a price per foot. Okay, thank you for that clarification. The other one is, <clears throat> if they are ruining their irrigation system, that should be the contractor's obligation to fix. I believe we did that on 11th Street. I don't recall that's going Tell back me the policy years. in regard. I'm not sure. Um, I know we did not do that on Vine Street. Typically, the projects I've been involved with, uh, private utilities and, uh, and irrigation systems, which are also private, are in city right-of-way. City right-of-way typically is there for city items. I know in most cases, if you have the gas or electric people move their items, it's at their cost. Uh, again, most of my background is the, the private sprinkler systems 
are a private owner's um, uh, responsibility. In this particular case, I did meet out on site with Jeff Hoff, who's from the uh, landscaping company that does all the work. Um, one thing that's turned out to be problematic is the installation of the original pipe is adjacent to, if not touching, the back of the curb. Uh, I would never put pipe there to begin with for just this very same reason. I'm not sure how or why or what approval process was went through at that particular time to install it. Typically there, there is an approval process to put things in a city right away I, and I'm not sure how that went in but um, it, it, it's kind of a bad deal that because there's no way you can remove and replace that curb with a one inch irrigation line pretty much adjacent to it. And that's consistent with engineering norms it's, or is it just out of our ordinance? Well our ordinance I don't believe really addresses irrigation. Well typically with street right of ways and drainage ways and uh, any private utilities or uses of the street right of way is subject to the city's right to repair replace the street and they have to repair and replace their private utility because they're used, the city has that easement and that takes priority or it's a dedicated street and they just plain own the street from edge to edge. And that's my understanding of where these irrigation systems are within the street Correct. right of way. So if I put in a sprinkler system, someone should tell me that I may end up. It should not be. There's, I do believe there's a process for um, cutting in a street right of way. You have to get a permit and then you agree that if there's any damage to that right of way, um, you repair it. Um, I know, for example, when we have special easements to put or allow fences in a street right of way or utility right. easement, anytime the city wants to come in and either take that out or if repair uh, damages the structure or the fence in the street right of way, that's at the person's cost because that's why the street the city has that right of way. Okay. You don't agree? Well, it's just, you know, how frustrated would you be if yours is broken, <clears throat> no fault of your own, city comes by and digs it up. But it's city property. But it's in city property. Yeah, we've I know. Had, but we've had issues citizen. in the past with snow plows as well, with sometimes with sprinklers that are too close to the road. Mm -hmm. You know, a snow plow has, especially in the areas where there aren't, where is, what is that, a graduated yeah. curb? What is that called, Tom? Surmountable? Where, the drive over curb? Or? Yeah, drive over curb. Surmountable. Where, you know, they've placed the sprinkler head too close to the, and then when the snow plow goes by, it picks it off. and. I believe that it's been the property owners, mm -hmm. but not necessarily germane to this case, but I know in the past, because it's in our right of way. Well, okay, it is. But if we go and have to go into private property, then we obviously would have to fix and repair things because the city inflicted damage to private well, yeah, property. I would assume if something happened on private property, the, the contractor would be responsible for it. Well, we aren't, Why? We, should, we, we shouldn't be on private property at all with this, Brett. Okay. So your recommendation stands then at the yes seventy three thousand. That's ten percent of the price. Well, again, and I, I do want to. Those are an, it's still an estimated number yeah. because we don't have the actual low bid, and that's not typically what we do. Is uh, this will be built, <coughs> and we would send out invoices uh, upon substantial completion. So in this particular case, again, we we hope hope without too much trouble from rain that it's going to be a two-month process maybe seven or eight weeks is our estimate at this time so if we start mid-june hopefully we're done uh, right around mid-august and that at that time we would send out the final invoice now we actually went ahead and tried to review and potentially update our assessment policy before the vine street project. yeah that was about two years ago yeah two and we kind of got to start but hadn't really because we were scratching our head because a lot of the assessment policies, short of not having an assessment policy, are there's so many variations that this ended up being fairly competitive or better. 
In terms of, yeah, percentage of a project, that right. I think most of the policies were at a higher percentage. Quite a bit project. higher, if I recall. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts, Tom? I'm ready to vote. So there is a resolution that would have to have action right. on it. Right. Should have to suspend if you're going yeah. to. I'll move to suspend. Do we want to take public comment? Sure, I'll. I'll oh. Well, is that right? well, the council will need to answer that, decide if they want to take public comment you because you closed the comment? hearing. I'm not opposed to it. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Can you come up to the podium, please? Uh, Houston 616 Grandview. Uh, thank you for allowing uh, yeah, a second. Uh, uh, my uh, first question is Will the council be responding to the letters that we send in? Will we get a reply to that? And you can answer these. Uh, yeah. Well, as we go, well, Tom, I believe just address. There's, a there's just let oh, I'm sorry. Many of you filed letters saying you were appealing from the preliminary resolution. Once the council takes action, if it approves the final re resolution, there's a statutory process right. for appealing that. So there won't, um, whereby you file an appeal from the final resolution. Okay. Then just uh, two other uh, quick points. I understand the benefit that you're uh, claiming that we all derive from this is the curb and gutter defines the limits of the property and increases the aesthetics. It helps with uh, erosion and prevents damage. And then you're using a simple mathematical process to say, if there are six homes on a cul-de-sac, you all benefit equally, so we'll assess all of you one-sixth of that because you all get the same benefit. And realistically, that is not the case. The other the rationale I hear you saying is, we've always done it this way, which really amounts to in 2015 and 2016, you've done it this way for the last two years. I, I just question using simple math in complex situations. I'm not opposed to paying for part of this. I just think there ought to be a more equitable way to do it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, we'll take one more. I have a question. Um, the uh, consultant. Can you state your name again? Oh, I'm sorry. Colleen Callahan, 600 Grandview Drive. Thank you. The consultant is from Minnesota. I'm wondering how familiar they are with the Wisconsin Special Assessment. They, uh, they've done several of our projects. But they know about the assessment? Uh, yes. Okay. They're actually one of our two uh, engineers for the city of Hudson. Okay. So they've done a number of projects in yeah. Wisconsin. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Including the Vine Street project. Anybody else have any thoughts? And my first question was why? Like, who decides that street needs this improvement? Uh, well, we have a rating system. I'm a chairman of the Public Works Committee also. And you look at the entire city, and there's a, a is it Pace, Whistler? Pace, Whistler. Whistler, excuse me. The Whistler rating system comes up with streets that are less than, um, or not as good a shape. It has a whole system, so one through 10, we'll just say it. And Grandview hits several of the key criteria for a road that if we don't fix it now or in the next two years, it could cost an order of magnitude more money to repair or replace over time. Kind of like Vine Street, way different than Vine Street. Vine Street was complete reconstruction, but Grandview has deteriorated in a way that if we don't repair it, probably this year uh, could cost another, I think they estimate another 500,000 or more. It's not making a whole lot of sense to wait to repair that road. And is that Grandview, I mean, outside of Stone Pine, I would say, yeah, it's definitely worse, like outside, outside of Stone Pine towards the expressway. Down through Stone Pine, you can come look at our curb and gutter. It is in perfect condition. There are no cracks, there's no crumbling. So I don't know where, I mean, that might just not be in our area. So could it be considered to just do a portion of Grandview rather than from well, I think what, what, what happens is, and other people can pipe in if they want, um, you have to look at all the bituminous and the road itself. And I just drove down there today, and it, your road's in really rough shape <laughs> compared to from Stone Pine, from Vine Street to 
uh, was Laurel or 17th is it's we flex patched it Tom Zuley's not here but um, there's been a lot of work done on it and in replacing the road it's cheaper as Tom points out to remove the curb and gutter and come back in with the machine because it can replay everything it's brand new and now the road is fixed so that it's now going to in 15 or 20 years from now it'll deteriorate roughly at the same time but to me it's modern I realize it's probably counterintuitive but that's just what we had to do with Vine Street and now there's a whole other section of Vine Street that's on our five-year plan but we're waiting because of high school and other things but th these roads just it it's better just to take it in the hall now I uh, just so you know um, I was very adamant about Vine Street and having that done I have a building on the corner of Vine and second so I had to pay I was assessed both faces on that building and mm -hmm. same policy so it, it's hard for us this is the second time we've been assessed and not everybody was <laughs> and so we've lived through this once we've had to pay before it just seems it seems a little ridiculous when I understand. it does not I don't see is that I the, have pictures of every is that the single, picture that was yeah. sent yes that's from her. she dropped that off today so that's when was this done and what for two days ago I have a, I oh, have a when was the pictures. curb and gutter oh yeah. I think it was 2002 that's the last right. bill I found yeah it was it was I think it was prior to that because I mean, obviously, you all know I live in Stone Pine as well, and yeah. I think it was the. Are you saying that all the curb and gutter was done all the way up and down the street, or I just know. your section? Our section. Okay, I mm -hmm. I don't know if that was. I think that was prior to 2001. Cause I think it was, was prior it to. It, no, it's it was 2002. Was it two? Okay. <laughs> I've got the receipt. Yeah. So was it I don't know if it was done in house or not. I I don't know that, Randy. What do you mean done in house? Whether we did it or whether it was the association did it or. The city did it. We were assessed by the city okay. for it. Okay, I'd have to check on that. Mm -hmm. And every single section, it's not crumbled, it is not cracked, the in-between, I mean, it's fine. And I understand it's easier, big picture. Are you talking from Stone Pine Bay going up the hill on your side, correct? Um, towards Laurel. Towards, towards mm -mm. Laurel. Mm -hmm. I'd have to check on this. So, and I haven't looked at everybody's section, but I know we paid for it before and it's in perfect condition. So I just want that to be considered because there may be other sections. But I can check and see on that assessment and see I'm just curious if we did it or if it was a well or professional the process or that was done okay. yeah. I can check on that I can email the council I can show you oh, no, I'm just saying he's asking about the process yep. and yep. we'll check what, yeah. what yep. happened okay. any other comments yes ma'am Beverly deck and I 401 Grandview Drive I am the one the property owner that has the most property. I would like to know why you didn't send out letters earlier than April saying that we were going to be assessed all of this and we have to come up with it by the end of August or October. Yes, you've made payment things available for people that want to do that, but 2% over what you are paying to borrow the money, I don't think that's right. I just don't think it's right. And what do we pay taxes for? If it isn't to improve our roads and the gutters. Think about it. All right. Could I, could I just ask one thing? Um, Corey, would it be possible for you to just sometime get me a copy of that special assessment thing just so I have a reference? Yes. Okay, thank you. There's one more hand up there, John. So can, oh, I'm sorry. I could see your hand there. I apologize. I'm Pat Smith, 501 Grandview Drive, and I'm very nervous. Um, I have not, I've been away, so I haven't been really involved in this situation. <laughs> And I planned to say nothing today. But if I understand the rationale for these assessments, it is that we will benefit as property owners. That, that seems to me what's being said. It's really hard for me to understand how sidewalks are any different from streets. We see people jogging, walking up and down. I never use my sidewalk, and it's used constantly by this community. 
what I've heard here today is it seems that the rationale for proceeding this way is because it's been done in the past two years. If there is an injustice in this, I wonder why we continue to perpetrate the injustice. Isn't there time to say maybe we need to reconsider this? As a single person on a fixed income, with, as Bev said, no foreknowledge that this was going to happen, and it sounds to me like is there a possibility that our assessments may all may be increased once you get the final bids in? Is that a possibility? Yes. Well, so li the likely scenario would have just to go through the process if again. If the assessments are higher than what we would have, there would have to be another public hearing. Mm -hmm. Norm normally, again, normally, the, when they do these estimates, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, they usually are estimated high. I yes. mean, to the, not necessarily. Okay very high but they usually do conservative estimates but if anybody's assessment is yes. higher than what we estimated we have to notify them and another public hearing would have to be held and then we hear too that we're going to have to repair our own um, irrigation systems which adds to this i i just wish that you would consider the whole philosophy of making homeowners pay for these assessments probably where we live and i I know that this is going to sound terrible. Probably most of us can afford it, although it may be a burden. But there are certainly parts of this city where getting a bill, mine is $2,300, just out of the blue, as Bev says, with no ability to plan for this, might be a substantial burden to people. Um, so I, I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you, and I hope I'm not repeating. I was late what other people have said. You're fine. Thank you. Yep. And just for clarification, there are no sidewalks being assessed on this, on this property. On other properties, they have been, but there's no sidewalks. Correct, Tom? Because those pathways are... So there's no sidewalks being assessed, I should say. All right. Yep. But it's, it's that whole area of the property. Right. Okay. Yep. Thank yep. you. So a couple things. This, our, Tom, our current assessment policy has been in place for a very long time. Is yeah. that correct? I think you were just citing a couple of examples from the past couple of years. Yes, the policy I believe is from 1982 with numerous revisions going up into 2000. And 1982, the last, yeah. the last revision. So it's the current policy and the policy has been followed as far as I know. It isn't just the two years that I mentioned examples. The policy has been followed for 20, 30 years. So, and that's what we have been following is the policy. And once again, just for my sanity, we have, we did take a stab at it two years ago. And I'm telling you, everywhere we looked, things were more expensive. So we kind of hit the brakes and said, wait, when we get more time, we'll try to review this assessment policy. I too have recently paid assessments. So, and I know Tom's going to, and it sounds like a lot of people live in Stone Pine. Um, I guess, do you have any other comments you'd like to make? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. I don't. Tom, how about the timing issue? Is it any different than we've done in the past? As far as the payment? No, that is the standard as far as I know. Exactly. That was no, the most recent change that was made was to allow, I think that was five, six, seven years ago, to allow, used to be you had to pay it or it went on the tax roll and then they allowed for, because there were some projects where some of the parcels were larger mm -hmm. and so they had four or five thousand, so they spread it out. That was approved, I think, even since you've been here. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the policy has, that's the only change that's been here since 2001. Can there be so. some um, adjustments so that letters go out earlier when the roads get to be <coughs> at a certain level of, of need so that people can plan ahead a little more? I've gotten comments well, the, from- right. The only difficulty potentially I could see with that, and again, Tom can correct me if I'm wrong, is that if if you were to go, let's say we decide we're going to do the rest of Vine Street two years mm -hmm. from now, the difficulty is guessing, estimating what the cost would be because right. mm -hmm. I assume there'd be fluctuations. But Tom, could you, I don't know if you want to clarify that. Or. On the, generally speaking, on the timing issue, there's a couple other factors that come into play. I mean, uh, the city started talking in the public works uh, meetings last fall about what streets we were looking at for the for the next year which is now 2017 
So there's a certain review process and evaluation process that goes through to select certain streets. And that said, the selection of which streets to do, uh, John meant, mentioned the street ratings, the Whistler, yes, we look at ratings, we look at drainage issues, we look at concrete curb and gutter. Uh, in these reconstructs or partial reconstructs, curb and gutter is a really critical item. You may have some asphalt that's in reasonable shape, but if the concrete curb is gone, uh, as in the case of, of Grandview, the, the curb is in such terrible shape, it's starting to affect the roadway. And John, like you mentioned, if we don't do something with it soon, now you're gonna have to, you're starting to have uh, the asphalt's undermining and you're gonna start to have a bigger dollar problem. But again, getting back to the timing thing, we try to sit down in the fall and pick a project that we can uh, obviously finance. So then there's a finance thing where the, ci the city council goes through a finance review and it's not approved until we, I can't remember, last two or three months ago. Uh, again, the process that we use is pretty much following state statutes on how people get notified, published in the paper, notifications are mailed to the individuals, public hearings, uh, advertisement for bids, uh, we, so that all that is is all by state statute. Um, so I guess uh, say last fall, even October, November, December, we weren't 100% sure this project was going to go forward. Um, we've had a couple of this is probably neither here nor there, but we've had a couple of schedule snafus in the last couple of years by virtue of big DOT projects that affected the city of Hudson. But without getting into the details. Um, so, and then one, the last thing, the council has to approve that project being selected, and then they also have to approve financing. So that's kind of the, the scenario from last fall that gets us to this spring on, on timing. Thanks, Tom. Sure. Uh, one final comment for me. I, I think we're done with public comment. 90% um, of this project is being paid by all of the citizens of Hudson is the way I look at it. Assessments are, um, you know, your neighborhood pays for roughly 10%, but the, city, the rest of the city is paying for the street repair. So it's not like you're being unfairly, well, never mind. Um, but what I'm saying is that 90%, uh, you know, I, I've been in the same boat. Everyone that lives on one of these streets uh, ends up getting assessed at some point in time. And it's been that way since 1982. Uh, and we have tried to look at it, but I, I, I hear what you're saying, and um, but I think that the policy, believe it or not, has been pretty reasonable um, up to this point. So that's all I have to say. Anybody else have any comments? Well, I just um, I'm public first <coughs> too, and what John said about the assessment policies in other cities, we looked at a variety of them, and we found that most of them were substantially higher than what we do in Hudson. In other words, the property owner in some cases has to pay 100% of the uh, construction cost. Um, obviously, we didn't want to go down that route because we didn't think that was fair. And the policy that we have um, of the ones we looked at is the, the one that least burdens the adjacent property owner compared to other municipalities. In other words, like John said, the, the citizens of Hudson as a whole are shouldering the major burden of this road and the uh, property owners percentage is 10 percent in many cases that is 20 30 40 50 up to 100 percent in other cities so uh, the assessment policy may seem unfair as it's applied to you but it's a policy that in overall assessment policies is fair for the city and the residents, I think. The other issue is balancing the, um, the cost of the repairs. We have a lot of repairs that we would like to do because, uh, and um, we want to keep the taxes at a reasonable level. And so it's, it's a tough thing to, to balance those issues. I'll move we suspend the rules. I'll second. A motion or second? Any discussion? Roll call. Roll call. Uh, Morissette? Yes. Palms? Yes. Formic? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Hall? 
Yes. I move to adopt resolution number 9-17. I'll second. Motion or second. Any other further comments, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you all for coming. We appreciate your input. Um, Marty went to get the. Sure Discussion and possible action on proposed amendments to the Municipal Code Chapter 255 zoning section 255 75.2 breweries, <coughs> brew pubs, wineries, and distilleries to allow breweries in the B3 Central Business District and the B2 General Business District through the approval of a conditional use permit, ordinance number 7 17. Good evening. Good evening. Who put me on the agenda right after that discussion? <laughs> Thank you. Um, you, you were going home early, huh? You know, yeah, right? So this is the last, this is probably the last item. This is the last thing that came off of Denny's desk. So if we botch this, he's probably watching in TV land and it's gonna be, <laughs> <laughs> he'll be having some words for me. But um, it sounds like uh, this was an item that um, we've had some interest in development of uh, a brewery downtown. Um, and in the past, we allowed for wineries and distilleries up to a certain amount of square footage. Brew pubs. And brew way. pubs, correct. Um, with that interest, um, it sounds like, and in, in reviewing the, the file, that uh, this would be a, a way to move forward to accommodate um, this type of use downtown without straining our utility system too much and, and creating a, a higher intensity use than we had planned for. I mean, it's very similar to a winery or a distillery. Um, it was presented to the plan commission on, I believe, March 28th. Um, it was recommended for approval. Um, it's really pretty straightforward. The amendments are highlighted in yellow in your materials. Um, if you have any questions, I can try to answer them. Like I say, I wasn't here for those initial discussions, but um, I'll do my best, so. Anybody? And this is for a microbrewery, not any, right? Or uh, up to 3,000 square foot of okay. production space, yep. How much? Live it on the barrel edge? Uh, no, I don't believe that was contemplated in that okay. amendment. I'll move we suspend the rules. Okay, motion to suspend. I'll second. Motion to second. Roll call. Morissette. Yes. Um, yes. Cormick. Yes. Weber. Yes. Hyatt. Yes. Paul. Yes. Motion's approved. Uh, Rules are suspended. Move to adopt ordinance 7 17. Second. Got a motion to second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, discussion of possible action on well treatment plant number 10, project bids. Uh, good evening. Sorry about missing the finance. Um, I guess uh, 2 p.m. Thursday, March 4th, we had six bids received for uh, well treatment plant number 10. Uh, Rice Lake Construction Group was low bid at $2,473,670. Uh, SEH has recommended uh, awarding the bid or the contract to Rice Lake Construction Group, that is the same group that actually built Well 8, uh, Odin O'Neill. Um, so we're very familiar with, with their work. They do fantastic work, so we didn't have any issues with that. Uh, on the second page is the bid tabulation that was compiled. And on the third page is the breakdown of costs. So uh, the construction cost was 2.473. Uh, construction contingency of 124,000, so total construction was about almost 2.6 million. 
uh, engineering design of 156,000, construction administration of 208,000, and city costs of 130,000 for a total project of $3,091,000. Um, we are using approximately $800,000 in cash to offset that $3 million. Um, we're also using about $370,000 in impact fees. And the remaining $1.9 million we are pursuing. Um, we had looked at doing bonding for that. Uh, we did apply for safe drinking water loan program uh, funds. We feel that we stand a very good chance at getting that, um, where we can actually get safe drinking water funds for about a point less than what we can bond for. So, um, so we are in the process of pursuing that. The Utility Commission has authorized SEH to um, pursue that loan application and see if we can get them bond funds for that. So we won't know any of that until probably late this year, early next year. Um, so in the meantime, we will just be paying for this out of our reserve fund, and then we'll be able to reimburse ourselves back with the uh, Safe Drinking Water Loan Program. So This is a good deal, right? This was coming in at like seven, eight, nine million the, originally? Or? Uh, back in 2008, 2009, when this project was first brought forward, um, it was bid out. It was bid at, I think it was like 5.6 million, somewhere in there. Um, today's numbers on that exact same project came in at 6.7 million. Um, we did scale this project way back. It still meets all of our needs, you know, that, that we need for supply. Um, but we did scale the building size back and things of that nature. And I know I had brought it, you know, in front of the commission on, you know, aesthetically what you wanted it to look like and things like that. So um, we're very happy with this. Our estimated, our estimated cost we were thinking was 3.7. So between estimated costs and actual costs for about 600,000 less. So it won't be a thought. Very cool. I'm gonna move to approve the bid from Rice Lake Construction Group. Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Thank you. Thanks, Kip. Uh, discussion possible action to create an ordinance on elected officials pay um, this information came up at finance several months ago we sought to have individuals from the community potentially volunteer to just you know to look at this and we did not get any volunteers so Alderperson Morris said ask that it be brought back up for discussion we just sent it to council to move it forward so I've, the, the issue sheet there has a history of you know what's been done it would not take effect the first offices that would take effect would be those elected next spring. If something's changed, it would be the offices next spring. Just out of curiosity, like, what do older council people for like River Falls or? I believe River Falls is 600 a month. I'm not sure the, I can look quick. In Menominee, I think it's 500. But you do have an idea or? 500 at Menominee? It's, I don't know about River Falls. I'm going to look quick. My idea, I, I don't recall my original idea, but it was 500 for Alderman persons. The mayor would be 1500 which would be a total budget impact for one year. Alder persons, 6000 and the mayor, 18000 And this has not been changed for a long, long time. What do I have in there? 2003, for four, somewhere in there is when it changed. So it's been... 12, 13 years. 2003 to And we're not eligible for our own increase. Correct. So those that were just elected, your rate would stay the same until the following election. So the first people it would impact would be uh, three, two, three, and four in the mayor's office, Next, whoever is elected next spring. They would get the increase. In, those that were elected this spring would remain at that lower rate until, because you can't give yourself a raise. Yeah, right. No, that's cool. So I think it's reasonable, and, and I, being here, one of the longer folks, it, it has taken considerably more time. You're on more committees. To, we added how many committees in the last few years? Urban Tree Board, for one, is an example. I do agree with my colleague, Mr. McCormick. It is a privilege, but it also does tax time mm -hmm. uh, when people are raising families, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the council in River Falls is 6,000 a year, so it would be 500. Yeah. Yeah. So it would, be, it would be the same as River Falls. Uh, so my proposal would be the 500 and the 1500. And 
essentially what we do is we go back and drop an ordinance because it's done by ordinance and then I could bring it back at the next meeting depending on what you want to do what has been done in the past I mean is there any big picture thing that we should be looking at like you know every 10 years or what, are, what I, I don't know what the when it was done prior to that I, it was done in 2000 and late 2002 to take effect in three and four is when the last time it was done so again it's been 15 years it's since a long it's been time. addressed and prior to that I think it was it was 250 a month and the mayor was like 600 a month or something like that So that, that is my motion mm -hmm. at this point. To develop an ordinance, okay. With what was this? With the 600. 500 or, a month yeah. for council members and 1,800 a month, 1,500 a month for the mayor, right. correct? Yes. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a motion and a second discussion. I don't know if I feel comfortable doing it without any public input. Well, the, it'll, you're not approving it tonight. You're just directing me to. <clears throat> so it'll be on the next agenda, you know. Yeah. And we did ask for people. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, I, it, to me, the big picture on this is to have a citizen committee that would would meet every so often to make a recommendation. Other communities have charter commissions that work on this type of thing that are in place, and and <laughs> we made that suggestion uh, a couple months ago, a few months ago, and. And it was posted in the paper for yeah. Yeah. two, three times. Yeah. yeah, I called a few people and asked them if they wanted to do it. Oh, yeah, there, nobody, was, yeah. there was no <laughs> interest. But I, think, I think that is the best way to do it, but what do you do if nobody wants to step but, yeah. Maybe this will prompt some citizen action. Sure. So but we'll have it on the next agenda yeah. with the ordinance, and you can always, you do you've got plenty reading. of time. So you could always just do a first reading next time and then. Mm -hmm. To allow it to get out there and because we have until the end of you have it till the end of november because okay. it has to be well the Before last meeting the next... in november prior to the papers being taken out which is december 1st mm -hmm. so we technically have to the second meeting <clears throat> in november to well it's going to be at the end of it over 15 years before any adjustments have been made i don't so okay all right we have a motion second any further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed Motion's approved. Uh, let's see. Discussion possible action authorizing water rate proposal. Uh, good evening again. Um, City of Hudson, we presented a rate case to Public Service Commission on July 29, 2016 for review and application for an increase in water revenues. Um, the increase is necessary due to a 263% increased water utility plan investment and 155% increase in operating expenses in the 20 plus years uh, since the, lad, the last rate increase with the 1995 and 96 test years. So uh, the total increase in water revenues requested is $320,090, which result in an estimated overall rate increase of 15% over the water utility's present revenues. If the request is granted, the water bill for general service for an average residential customer with a uh, 5 8 or 3 quarter inch meter who uses 1,400 cubic feet, approximately 10,500 gallons of water per quarter, will increase from $31.62 to $35.95 $35 or 14%. The direct charge for public fire protection for an average res residential customer with a 5 8 or 3 quarter inch meter will decrease from $19.85 to $15.60, or 21%. Uh, Hudson Public Utilities has requested cr uh, class rates. The residential class and the multifamily residential class will have a uniform volume rate of $1.55 per 100 cubic feet for all water used each quarter. The non-residential class, which includes commercial, industrial, and public authority customers, will have a declining block rate structure of $1.55 per 100 cubic feet for the first 5,100 cubic feet used each quarter, $1.30 per 100 cubic feet for the next 195,000 cubic feet used each quarter, and 75 cents per 100 cubic feet for any water used over 200,100 cubic feet each quarter. The new irrigation class will have a uniform volume rate of $2.85 per 100 cubic feet for all water used 
Each quarter for landscape irrigation, which includes the use of water to sustain crops, lawns, landscapes on any residential, commercial, industrial, or public authority property, including water used for irrigating athletic fields, parks, and golf courses. We did, I did present this to the Public Utility Commission on May 9th. Um, they did vote in favor of forwarding it to the City Council for approval. Uh, and continuing with the public hearing on May 24th, 2017 at 10 a.m. with rates becoming effective uh, starting the fourth quarter billing cycle on or around October 3rd, 2017. Um, in your packet after the uh, issue sheet, um, there is a couple, there is some, some other items attached to that. Uh, one is a financial sheet that, that Brenda can go through with you if needed. Uh, the next are a five-year capital plan on projected projects that we had found um, through our uh, 2015 sanitary survey that we had with the DNR and different issues and projects that we needed to, to update. Uh, the Schedule 14 is in there, which comes directly out of the Public Service Commission documents that will be presented at the public hearing, um, which kind of lists all the residential, commercial, industrial, all your different customers. Uh, your meter size, and then it gives you the, the breakdown um, of pretty much what the, the new rates would be. Uh, and lastly, Brenda had put together a very nice um, comparison sheet that pretty much compares our new rates uh, if, if, if they go through and when they become effective uh, with the city of River Falls and the city of New Richmond. Um, just so we, we, we wanted to give you that just to show that even with the new rates, we haven't increased in, in 22 years, um, even with the new rates, we are still cheaper in every single category uh, with the surrounding communities. So um, you were also emailed separately a packet that included, it, it looks like this, it, it's the, the entire rate case document that, that was prepared by Public Service Commission. Um, that's basically all, all the information for the rate case that we need, and then you're also emailed the operating rules, um, just different things that, that will change that we have to abide by for operating a utility. So if you have financial things, Brenda's the person to talk to there. So we, we've talked about this for a while. Rate we, cases are normally looked at in a like a five, three to five year cycle, not a norm, 22 normally, year. <laughs> normally, um, to be good stewards, to run your utility, we should be looking at this about every two to three years. Um, we can do simplified rate increases in the future. Um, we can do, I believe, up to three or four of them. Um, it might be five, I'm not sure. Um, but then we, we will have to go back and do a, another full-blown rate case. But you know, keep in mind, um, it's been 22 years since we had any increase in water rates in this city. Um, and we're only proposing a 14, 15% increase. So, I mean, we're raising this less than 1% a year. So. I have a question, and I can't remember what the name of the fund is, but when you were part of Public Works, there's a fund that you have that has how much money in it? That was for wastewater. That's wastewater. Okay. Which we'll be getting to next. But. Okay. All right. There is a general fund for the utilities. It's I don't know what the, ba the balance should be on these sheets here. Maybe Brenda has that. Yeah, there's a fund balance with the water utility, but you're talking about the sewer replacement fund and the DNR required fund. Those yeah, I'm are also talking about that fund, though, okay. too. Um, uh, on page three of your packet, on the bottom you have your cash and operations, your future facilities cash, your impact fees cash, and then uh, a little bit of unspent bond proceeds from Vine Street. Is, are those the numbers? Yeah. And so those are uh, right now at the end of uh, 2016, cash operations is about $7 million. And then impact fees uh, are 276 Our intention is to use that for well number 10. And then uh, that cash operations, uh, that $7 million, it's, it's a, you know, chunk of change but um, on that uh, the next page are your capital projects that are coming up we're gonna be using one million dollars for Excel the Excel building um, and then uh, some about a million dollars for well number 10 also so the balance is 
the money that's in the fund is, belongs to the people that have paid all these years. Correct. So uh, what's the reason that some of that is not being used so that the rate increase doesn't need to be Oops, excuse me. Um, what I did today is I, um, I looked at those five-year capital projects that uh, Kip was talking about that we have coming on the horizon and looked at that $7 million. Um, the $7 million actually um, is less than a $1 million at the end of 2020, okay. even with the rate increase. And so we're, we're being proactive, looking at the rates, uh, knowing that the projects that need to be done, every time we paint a water tower, um, it's 500,000, 400 to 500. So we know we've got those coming up. Thanks. Is there a motion? Uh, I have a, yeah. go ahead, we need a motion anyway. I'll move to approve. Do we have to suspend rules? No. No, this is just a motion because ultimately oh. the Public Service Commission is the one that approves or disapproves. Well, no, we need a motion for right. you to approve this um, and then it will move forward to the public hearing right. on March 24th. Um, once it goes through public hearing. May 24th? Or, I'm sorry, May 24th. Once it goes through public hearing, uh, then, it, then it becomes official. But we need you to approve it tonight to move it forward to that process, or through that process. So I will move to approve the water rate increase. I'll second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion? I find it curious that um, the more water you use, the cheaper it gets. There is no efficiency in using more water, so it's just like, that's not a conservation practice. So I, I just, and I understand, or at least I've been told that that's the way everybody does it, but that's not, that, that's odd. Just to, clar just to clarify, that is today's practice. The new rates are not that way. Today's practice, the more water you use, the cheaper it gets. Really? Today. Okay. But for commercial users? For commercial users, yes. That is, that is accurate. But for residential users? But for residential. And, residential and, is, you know, is what it is. Right. But uh, I'm looking He's at, asking at about the, commercial, commercial the commercial practice of the more water you use, the, the cheaper it gets. Well, also, you've got to consider that the, your industrial, your commercials use way more water than a normal um, household does. So you do want to keep your price points in check. Um, otherwise, you do run the risk of driving business right out of town. You know, restaurants, things of that nature. So, um, okay. How many users do we have that are at the, the upper levels? Is it I don't know off the top of my head. Something to think about, though, is... Mm -hmm. Well, one of the discussions at the um, Utilities Commission um, meeting was about whether we should take another look at our mission statement and add conservation to, to the mission statement. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion's approved. Thank you. Yep, I think you're wastewater. Wastewater. Yeah, I got different paperwork. Okay. Uh, discussion: Possible action authorizing wastewater rate proposal and adoption of ordinance number eight seventeen amending wastewater rates. Mayor, members of the council. Um, Last uh, budget season, uh, we knew that uh, the sewer fund um, or the wastewater fund needed uh, a rate increase, but we wanted to wait until uh, to get the uh, water rate increase through the PSC. Um, and so that's now been done. So we looked at that now and we're proposing a rate increase of 15%. Last time it was uh, increase was 2009. Um, and it's, uh, it will be used uh, to fund the operating, operating deficit right now. Um, there is uh, cash in the fund, but it's uh, being earmarked for the, the future facilities uh, cash, and so we, we don't want to, we shouldn't use that. We, need, we know that we're going to have um, some kind of wastewater treatment plant or expansion uh, in the future, so we want to hold on to that. And so this is really just to fund operations. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion and second to suspend. Roll call. Harmick? Yeah. Well, more set. Yes. Um, yes. Weber? Yes. Hyatt? Yes. Long. Yes. Motion's approved. Rules are suspended. 
Will we adopt resolution ordinance eight or ordinance eight dash seventeen? Second. Got a motion and a second. Right. Discussion. Just a question. Mm -hmm. What is the what's the amount of the operating deficit? Uh, the operating cash right now is um, a negative 100,000. Actually, it's a negative uh, 200,000. Uh, but we do know that we have some uh, bonds uh, that their last payment will be in 2018. And so there's some bond designations um, for cash that we know that we can move up uh, to that balance. And so right now we're, we're, at, we're down to about $156,000 in cash in that fund. further discussion just to hope that we'll continue to be more proactive in rate adjustments and you know that I know you know we, that, yep, but it's we worth saying it out loud anybody else all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed motions approved thanks Brenda thanks Kip uh, discussion possible action on pay adjustment for patrol officer chief Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm asking for a pay adjustment for Officer Kyle Knepler uh, from a step one to a step three in our process. It takes five years for an officer to reach max benefit. We've done this for at least four officers on my department that I'm aware of. And the reason that we do this is that we would like to retain and actually attract officers that have experience to come to our department so that um, we're not always trying to get brand new recruits and we can get some people with here with experience. Kyle comes from us from North Hudson where he worked for seven and a half years before he came here. So he's got eight and a half years of law enforcement experience. Again, as I said in finance, it's just a pay increase. It just moves him up on the step. He doesn't increase his, uh, his uh, seniority nor his vacation time. Um, and again, I've done it for four of their officers and I do have the money in the budget as Devin had mentioned earlier. Okay. I'll move to approve. Second. Got a motion, a second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Thanks, Chief. Uh, communication recommendations from the mayor. Got a public works proposal or proclamation. Whereas public works services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support an understanding of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works systems and programs such as water, sewer, Streets, highways, public buildings, and solid waste collection, and whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas we commend the efforts and skills of the public works employees dedicated to improving the quality of life for present and future generations. Now, therefore, I, Rich O'Connor, Mayor of the City of Hudson, do hereby proclaim the week of May 21st to the 27th, 2017, as National Public Works Week in the City of Hudson and call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions that public works officials makes every, make every day toward our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Thank you. Um, just the only other thing I have to say is congratulations, Mike, on your official initiation to the City Council here tonight, <laughs> flying solo. <laughs> Good to have you here. Happy to be back. Uh, that's all I've got. Anybody else? Anything? Okay. Motion? Move to adjourn. Got a motion and a second to adjourn. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's approved. Stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody.